Hello students, welcome to lecture 30. Today I am going to discuss about atomic spectroscopy. As the name suggests, atomic spectroscopy involves transition between electronic states of an atom. As you know, atoms have electronic degree of freedom apart from translational and nuclear spin. But they do not have vibrational and rotational degree of freedom. So electronic spectra of atoms are much simpler than that of the molecule. So today I am going to show you how to calculate the energy associated with different electronic states of an atom. Today I will discuss only hydrogen and hydrogen like atoms. In the next lecture, I will be discussing other atoms. So, what I mean by hydrogen or hydrogen type atom is that they consist of a nucleus and just one electron. So, it is a one electron system. For example, hydrogen, helium plus or lithium 2 plus. So, uh, for calculation of energy, we need to write first Schrodinger equation for an atom. So, we will start with kinetic energy operator because Schrodinger equation consists of applying Hamiltonian operator on a wave function to get the energy. Hamiltonian has two parts, kinetic energy operator and potential energy operator. So, first we will look at how to calculate ener kinetic energy operator for an atom. So, atom has an electron and electron suppose has a mass m and here is your nucleus with mass capital M, mass capital M. So, these are the two constituents of a hydrogen like atom. There is only one electron and there is a nucleus. So, kinetic energy operator of an electron will be written by this term which we already know that minus h square by 8 pi square m delta e square delta e square where small m is mass of an electron. Similarly, we can write kinetic energy operator for a nucleus. Similar way, we will write the operator minus h square by 8 pi square. Now, we will take mass of mass of nucleus and again delta E square and delta N square is Laplacian operator with respect to electron and nucleus. Now, let us think about potential energy operator. So, for calculation of potential energy, we need to know the coordinate and here coordinate of electron is x e y e z e, whereas coordinate of nucleus is x n, y n and z n. The subscript denotes the symbol for electron and n is symbol for your nucleus. So, as expected, this will involve six variables. First, what we will do is we will try to express potential energy in terms of distance between nucleus and electron. So, suppose we take a coordinate system such that the distance of nucleus from the this is the nucleus distance of nucleus with respect to origin is R n and distance of electron with respect to origin is R e. Then the distance between electron and nucleus can be written with this expression R is equal to R n minus R e. Now, we know how to write 
kinetic energy operator and how to write potential energy operator, let us put it in Schrodinger equation. So, you have this plus this. So, this is your kinetic energy operator for electron, this is kinetic energy operator for nucleus. Let us write in since I have denoted everywhere by n and this is your potential energy V as a function of R n minus R e and then wave function is a function of R e and R n. When this Hamiltonian operator is applied on this wave function, we can get your energy, we can get your energy. Here a differential equation involves 6 variables, so we need to do simplification. So, in the previous slide I have written the Schrodinger equation which is not easy to solve. So, we will do some simplification. The simplification which we do is we divide the motion into two parts. One is translational motion the center of mass is moving. So, you can think of a nucleus and this is electron, this is moving together or basically its center of mass is moving. And then the second motion is relative motion which is motion of electron with respect to nucleus. So, we are looking at motion with motion of electron with the nucleus and if we can separate it it will be easier to it will be easier to solve it solve the Schrodinger equation. So, let us look at relative motion coordinate the way we do is this I have already told you that R can be expressed in terms of R n and R e and now center of mass coordinates. So, what will happen is let us go back one more time. So, this is your R, R n minus R e and if I want to look at the coordinate of center of mass, how we are going to write. So, coordinate of center of mass can be written as m into R e. So, this is mass into R e plus cap capital M into R n this one are divided by m plus m. And now coordinate of this center of mass is big X, big Y and big Z, capital X, capital Y and capital Z, where X can be written like m x e plus m x n divided by m plus capital M, m plus capital M. So, you see this mass of electron multiplied by x coordinate of electron plus mass of nucleus multiplied by x coordinate of nucleus divided by mass of electron plus mass of nucleus. So, this is the way you can calculate what will the value of x. Similarly, you can write the equation for capital Y and equation for capital J. So, this is now coordinate for your center of mass, coordinate for center of mass. Now, the next thing is to calculate kinetic energy operator in terms of capital R and a small r, capital R and a small r. Again, capital R denotes coordinates in center of mass system, where R shows you coordinates for the relative motion of electron. So, now think of before solving we can just think of uh, how to write kinetic energy operator for center of mass. The way I talked about center of mass is this is the electron, this is nucleus and these are moving right these are moving together and so your mass will be replaced by m plus m 
because your this whole system mass is m plus m. So, h square by 8 pi square m plus m delta r square. Similarly, we can write kinetic energy for relative motion of electron and in that case what will happen that this is nucleus and this electron is moving relative. So, so your center of mass is also a bit moving. So, in that case you will use mu which is your reduced mass for the system and here will be Laplacian operator in the new coordinate and square of that. But now let us think of how to come at this uh, value of kinetic energy operators. Okay, so, already I defined R is equal to R n minus R e and capital R is equal to m R e plus capital M R n divided by m plus n. So, capital X can be written as mass of electron multiplied by x coordinate of electron plus mass of nucleus multiplied by x coordinate of nucleus and then mass of electron plus mass of nucleus. And this x, the small x tells you about coordinates in your relative motion of electron system. So, x is equal to x n minus x e. So, this is r n minus r e. So, you can write x n minus x e. Now, let us try to write kinetic energy operator in the center of mass system. So, for that what we need to calculate is first derivative del psi by del x n and the second derivative del 2 psi by del x n square. So, first I will explain you how to write the first derivative. So, this is your differential of wave function with respect to x n, where x is x n is coordinate of nucleus, coordinate of nucleus. So, that can be written like this del psi by del x into del x by del x n at constant x e plus del psi by this del capital X multiplied by again del capital X by del x n at constant x e. So, why we are doing that? We need to express this term in terms of this x and this capital X coordinates. Okay. So, x is coordinate for relative motions and here the capital X is coordinate uh, when we are dealing with a motion of center of mass. Now, let us calculate del x by del x n. We know that x is equal to x n minus x e. So, if I differentiate this del x by del x n at constant x e, I will get 1. And now, you calculate this del capital X by del x n. Again capital X, we just uh, wrote that it is equal to m into x e plus capital M into x n divided by small m plus capital M. If I differentiate this x with respect to x n taking x e constant, what I am going to get is m divided by m plus small m plus capital M. So, this is given here. Now, I am going to plug in these two value into this equation. What I will get is del psi by del x and this equal to 1 and so you can just multiply by 1 and this is del psi by del capital X which is written here and now del capital X by del x n at constant x e and that is equal to capital M divided by small m plus capital M. So, that is what written here. So, now we know first derivative, okay, first derivative. So, we have expressed first derivative in terms of 
capital R and a small r, capital R and a small r. Now, let us go and write the second derivative. So, second derivative again we will uh, go in a similar way. So, second derivative you can calculate by taking differential with respect to x n for del psi by del x n which we have just solved. And what we got for del psi by del x n is this quantity del psi by del x plus m divided by capital M plus small m del psi by del x. Now, we will do similarly this calculation. So, again del by del x I will write and then I will take this function here and then del x by del x n at constant x e. Here you see del by del x. Now, I take again this function multiplied by del x by del x n when x is taken as constant. And this we already know del x by del x n at constant x e that is equal to 1. So, I will simply write this expression and for this I know this is equal to m divided by uh, your capital M plus small m. Now, when you this open it up, what you are going to get is del 2 psi by del x n square is del 2 psi by del x square plus here you see plus this is del m plus m divided by m plus small m square. So, this comes from here and this you see del 2 psi by del x square. So, this term, so first term came from this one, the second term came from this one. So, this is for second term, this is for first term and then this two term adds up to give you twice of capital M divided by capital M plus small m del by del x and del psi by del x. So, this is your second derivative for nuclear uh, for center of mass uh, for center of mass motion. Now, in the similar way we can write the second derivative for electrons or I am here talking about a relative motion of electron. So, del psi by del x e if you do that what you are going to get is this difference only is your this has negative sign and here capital M is replaced by a small m that is the only difference and negative sign comes because if you look here it is x is equal to x n minus x e. So, x n has positive and x e is minus and so when you do del x by del x e at constant x n you will get minus 1. And so, del psi by del x e will be equal to minus del psi by del x plus small m divided by capital M plus small m del psi by del capital X. Same way we can also calculate the second derivative and what we are going to get is del square psi del 2 psi by del x e square is equal to del 2 psi by del x square m divided by m plus capital M plus small m square del 2 psi by del capital X square minus 2 small m divided by capital M plus m del by del x del psi by del capital X. If you compare with del 2 psi by del x n square, then the difference is here you will get capital M and at this place you will get capital M. This is for center of mass movement movement of center of mass. So, in that case this will be capital M, this will be capital M and this will be positive sign. This is, this is going to have positive sign. 
So, once we have done this, let us go and calculate the kinetic energy operator. So, this is the second differential of wave function with respect to x in and this is your second differential of wave function with respect to x in. Now, to calculate the sum of two kinetic energy operator, what we will do is we will multiply this by minus h square by 8 pi square m and this by minus h square divided by 8 pi square small m. So, difference is here is capital M, here is small m. When we do that, we will get this corresponding to this term corresponding to your kinetic energy operator for center of mass motion and this is your kinetic energy operator for relative motion. Okay. Here what we will get? You see this del 2 psi by del x square both have and since we have multiplied by minus h square by 8 pi square. So, in the both terms, so minus h square by 8 pi square will be common. Here 1 by m and this is 1 by small m. So, this is for your the first term. Now, look at the second term del 2 psi by del x square. What you are doing is minus h square by 8 pi square both side we are multiplying. Okay. So, now the second term is 1 by m multiplied by this whole thing. So, suppose I take uh, m square out. So, m square divided by m is m and same thing if you do here then m square divided by m is small m. So, what is left which is common is 1 by m plus capital M plus small m square and this is your del 2 psi by del x square. Now, look at the third term, what will happen to third term? So, see here m m cancels out, small m small m cancels out. So, plus one has plus sign, another has minus sign. So, this basically your cancels out, this cancels out. So, we have this expression for kinetic energy operator, kinetic energy operator of the whole hydrogen atom, hydrogen atom. Now, we have expressed the kinetic energy operator in terms of small r and capital R. Now, this is your whole kinetic operator. This we did with respect to a small x which is basically x coordinate for your relative motion and this is your x coordinate for center of mass motion. Now, one thing which you will notice is that this can be written as 1 by m plus 1 by capital M plus 1 by small m can be written like 1 by mu. So, you remember h square by 8 pi square into mu. So, this is your inverse of reduced mass, inverse of reduced mass and that is what we are going to put it here. So, here you see this is your minus h square by 8 pi square reduced mass into del 2 psi by del x square plus this term. So, this is your kinetic energy operator with respect to relative motion, this is kinetic energy operator with respect to your center of mass. This we have done with respect to x. Similarly, we can find out the second differential or kinetic energy operator with respect to y and with respect to z. When we do that, the total kinetic energy operator will be simply here what you will do is in place of del x square by del x, x square, 
you put del a square by del x a square plus del a square by del y a square plus del a square by del z a square. And similarly, here you will replace del a square by del capital X a square by del a square by del capital X a square plus del a square by del capital Y a square plus del a square plus del capital Z a square. So, this is your kinetic energy operator. Now, you can write Schrodinger equation. So, this is your Schrodinger equation and now you see this is delta C m or delta R you can write. So, this is your Laplacian operator in center of mass system, this is Laplacian operator due to your relative motion of electron. And now, what will be the V value? V we already know that V will be equal to Z e square by 4 pi epsilon naught 1 by R, 4 pi epsilon naught 1 by R. So, now we know potential energy, we have expressed kinetic energy operator in center of mass system and your in a system where we are considering only relative motion of electron. You can see that this is the kinetic operator for motion of center of mass, this is kinetic operator for relative motion and this was the thing what I was saying that this is because of two system of uh, electron and nucleus is moving together, moving together and that is why you have m plus capital M plus small m. And for relative motion, here your nucleus is here and this is moving around this. But you see center of mass will be also slightly changing depending on motion of electron and so you have reduced mass. So basically that is what I was saying that if electron moves related to nucleus, center of mass also moves and that is why there is a reduced mass term. Now, what I will do is I will try to write or try to separate the equations. One equation which will deal with the motion of center of mass and another which will deal with your motion relative motion. Till now we have the combined Schrodinger equation. Now we have to divide in two different equation if you want to solve it. So, the way we do it is let us take wave function which is a function of R and capital R as a multiple of wave function of center of mass which is a function of capital R multiplied by wave function associated with relative motion and which is function of a small r. So, if we do that the h we are going to write as Hamiltonian for center of mass is minus h square by 8 pi square capital M plus small m Laplacian operator for center of mass square and then we can write this equation. So, if I apply Hamiltonian operator on the wave function, we are going to get energy due to the motion of center of mass. Hamiltonian for relative motion can be written in this term. So, minus h square by 8 pi square reduced mass into Laplacian operator a square plus your, your Laplacian operator, this is wholly Laplacian operator. So, Laplacian operator plus potential energy which is a function of r, potential energy which is a function of r. So, now you see in center of mass there is no potential energy term in the your relative motion you have a potential energy term. We are looking at the energy level of electrons and so we are more interested in the energy associated with electronic levels. Schrodinger equation for relative motion will be written like this. Schrodinger equation for 
relative motion will be given by this. This is your Hamiltonian when you apply on wave function, it will give you the energy of electronic levels, energy of electronic levels. So, we are going to see the solution for relative coordinate equation. We are going to see the solution for Schrodinger equation in relative coordinate system. So, this I have already discussed in the rotation chapter when I was discussing about rotational motion that for three dimensional movement what we need to do is express Laplacian in terms of polar coordinates. Now, what I will do is first we will write the Laplacian operator in polar coordinate and then we will see how to apply for hydrogen atom. So, we know that in the rotational motion chapter we have seen that minus s cross square by 2 y this term multiplied by r square plus this term multiplied by r square when applied to a spherical harmonics it will give you energy multiplied by spherical harmonics. So, if you see this, this should be equal to your E multiplied by 2 i or this is basically H Hamiltonian y. Okay? So, if we write this operator 1 by sin theta del by del theta sin theta del by del theta del y by del theta 1 by sin a square theta del a square y by del phi a square that should be equal to h multiplied by you see here 2 i is there. So, 2 i by minus h cross a square minus h cross a square. So, this is h into 2 i by h cross a square into y and then this is the same thing which I have taken from the last slide. So, this is your h multiplied by 2 i by h cross a square into y and Hamiltonian operator is equal to L square by 2 i operator. So, this whole thing will be equal to L square by 2 i multiplied by 2 i divided by h cross a square h cross a square h cross a square i and so you see 2 i 2 i cancels out and so what we have is this whole term is equal to l a square divided by h cross a square into y. Now, you divide that by r a square what I will get is 1 by r a square l a square operator divided by h cross a square into y and your Laplacian operator is equal to this that is what we discussed earlier. So, this del a square will be equal to this term that is what I have written here minus. So, here was the minus term. So, I, I missed this. So, please correct it. So, minus and sum of this is equal to 1 by r a square l a square operator divided by h cross a square. So, now this is your whole this is your expression for Laplacian operator expression for Laplacian operator. Now, if you look back this is your Laplacian operator. Now, what I am doing is I am now multiplying by minus h cross a square. So, simply I multiplied here and if you go back there by h cross a square. So, this h a square h cross a square will cancel out. So, I am writing 1 1. So, L a square operator by R a square and then if you divide by 2 divide by 2 mu which is reduced mass then you will write minus h cross a square by 2 mu and here 1 by 2 mu r a square which is equal to 2 y and now I can rep 
write the whole Hamiltonian for the electron for the electron in a relative coordinate system and this will be equal to your this expression. So, why we are doing that because what we are trying to do is the terms which is function of theta and phi we try to express in terms of angular momentum operator because we already know the solution of that already know the solution of that and so if you put the values which we obtain in the rotational spectroscopy we need not have to separate r theta and phi r theta and phi and I will show you this. So, this was the equation which I got in the last slide and this was the expression which we derived when we were discussing rotational motion. So, I am going to put it here when I plug in here then you get this value we get this value minus h cross square l l plus 1 by 2 i and now I put also value of v and this is your Schrodinger equation and if you take E r this side you have a this differential equation and now it is easy to solve ok it is easy to solve. Now, let us see how we will solve it again I will make another simplification what we will do is we have already expressed the psi which is basically as a function of r in this relative motion coordinate system this psi is a function of r theta phi and we are separating this in terms of r r into spherical harmonics and now what we are going to do is just put this r this radial wave function in terms of u r by r u is another function of r divided by r again we are trying to simplify nothing else. So, when you do that what you are going to get is uh, you see here I have replaced your psi r with u r by r and here again psi r by u r by r that is what I have done. Now, good thing is that if you do that this will be further simplified and that is why we did it. So, how does it look like when I put psi r as u r by r. So, see here del by del r r square del by del r u r by r is equal to del by del r r square and now differentiate this so, first differential we are doing. So, 1 by r differential of u r with respect to dr minus this will be plus, but since so u r will take as a constant and differential of 1 by r with respect to r will be minus 1 by r square and so minus term comes here. So, u r by r square. So, this is for this differential you will get uh, this term if I do this differential I will get this term. Now, what I will do I will multiply it by r square. So, that is what we are doing multiplying by r square and if we multiply by r square what we are going to so this is the same thing which I have got in the previous slide we have to multiply by r square when we do that what you will get is r square by r is r and u r by r square is u r. Now, if I do this differential what I am going to get is del r by del r cancels out. So, del u r by del r. Now, what I will do is I take r constant and take differential for this. So, plus r del 2 u by del r and minus now for this second term differential del u r by del r. Now, you see this this terms cancels out so, this whole term becomes r into del 
the square u r by d r. So now you will understand why we replaced the r with u r divided by small r. So wave function, radial wave function r by your u which is a function of r divided by a small r. Now we have got this, let us multiply by 1 by r square, when we do that I will get this equation 1 by r del a square u r by del r. Now this was the equation which we got earlier and this we have already solved this whole thing and so I am going to put this in place of this and when I do that this is our new Schrodinger equation. This is our new Schrodinger equation. I have done nothing. I am simply plugged in the value obtained here in this equation. So, this is the thing which we get. Okay. Now, again this is from the previous slide. This equation I have got from previous slide. Now, let us look at this. These are these two R terms. Okay. So, there are two terms in this expression and both have small r in the denominator. But since a small r is, is not going to be infinity and so the other part must be equal to 0 and that is what we are going to write. So, we just remove the small r from the denominator. Now, we are going to see the solution. So, what we will do is we will you see again this is a complicated equation. So, the way I simplify it is let us go and see what will be the differential equation for different value of L. You see there are different value of L. This expression has L quantum number. So, what I am going to do is write the differential equation for different value of L and then start with a equation which is a guess equation and then you try to find out the second differential and see what value of E and wave function you get. So, if I take L is equal to 0, this whole thing goes away and then we have this differential equation. This differential equation for which I am going to see the solution. So, let us look for solution of differential equation for L is equal to 0. If you go back again, this differential equation, if you see that this is your second order differential with respect to r. The second term has 1 by r and third term is your constant. Okay. In fact, we know the solution of this kind of differential equation and that is why I first put L is equal to 0 and I am trying to look at the solution and these are the very well known differential equations. So, solution is already known. What is the solution? Solution is your u r is equal to r exponential minus some constant multiplied by r. So, this is your constant. Now, let us see what we get when we differentiate this. So, let us do first differential. What you will get is you see del d r by dr is 1. So, this is constant and you are differentiating first r. So, this will give you this quantity. Now, what I am going to do? I am going to take r as constant. I am going to differentiate this and what we will get is minus gamma into exponential minus gamma r. So, r multiplied by minus gamma exponential minus gamma r. So, this is your first differential. Now, let us go do second differential differential for this equation, this has only one term. So, this is exponential multiplied by differential of minus gamma r 
with respect to r and that will give you minus gamma. Now, differentiate for this one. Again, I am going to take r as constant. If I, I take r as constant, what I am going to get is exponential minus gamma r and if I multiplied by the differential of minus gamma, which is minus gamma and you have minus gamma already here. So, minus gamma into minus gamma is plus gamma square. So, this when we have taken r as a constant, now we will take this exponential term as a constant and we will differentiate r. So, dr by dr is 1 and so you are going to get minus exponential minus gamma r. And if you look at here, what you will get is gamma exponential minus gamma r and minus gamma exponential minus gamma r. So, these two terms combined to give you minus 2 gamma exponential minus gamma r plus gamma x square r exponential minus gamma r. And that means d 2 u by d r square is minus 2 gamma u by r plus gamma square into u. And this is the kind of differential equation you have. This is the kind of differential equation you have. So, here you see this is the second differential of u and this is your with respect to r and this is simply a constant multiplied by wave function. So, let us compare the two equations. This was the equation which we got right now. So, here I have done uh, simply I have multiplied this whole term by minus h cross square by 2 mu. So, you are going to get this equation and now if I compare with the differential equation which I got for L is equal to 0, what I am going to get is, let us see here, your this whole thing is equal to this whole thing with the minus, minus sign. So, minus h cross square by 2 mu into 2 gamma is equal to or divided by r you can take or you can leave it is equal to minus j d square by 4 pi epsilon naught. So, you can put r, r, r cancels out. So, that is ok. So, this is the first uh, relationship which we got. So, from this what you will get is the value of this gamma and gamma is equal to your j d square by 4 pi epsilon naught minus minus cancels out. So, 2 2 2 cancels out. So, mu divided by h cross square. So, this is value of gamma. Now, the second comparison of these two terms will give you E is equal to minus h cross square by 2 mu gamma square and I have already known gamma. So, you got the energy term. You got the energy term. So, this is the this energy term which uh, we have got for got after solving differential equation for L is equal to 0. So, this is not only one solution. I will show you that there are more solutions for L is equal to 0. So, let us go what will be the second solution. The second solution for L is equal to 0 is obtained when you take u r is equal to r minus r square gamma into exponential minus gamma r. So, u r divided by r is equal to 1 minus r gamma exponential minus gamma r. Now, let us do differentiate this with respect to r. What I will get is first thing you have to differentiate is r exponential minus gamma r. For that, if I differentiate r keeping this constant, then I will get exponential minus gamma r. Now, I am taking r constant and differentiating this term. So, r is here and differential of this is gamma exponential minus gamma r with minus sign. So, this is for the first term. Now, for the second term, r square gamma, first we have taken r square gamma as a constant and we differentiated exponential minus gamma r which will be minus gamma r minus minus plus. So, r square gamma square exponential minus gamma r and then now, you keep exponential minus gamma r constant and you differentiate r square, then you are going to get this term. You are going to get this term. This, so, this is your first differential. Now, you can also do second differential. If you do second differential for this, you are going to get this term. 
for gamma r exponential gamma r this you will get when you take r as constant this you will get when you take exponential minus gamma r as constant. So, this is for uh, two terms now let us see r square gamma square. So, if I take exponential minus gamma r constant I will get this if I take r square as constant then I will get this. Now, for the third term ok. So, first one when I take exponential minus gamma r as a constant and second I will get when I take r as a constant. So, there are seven terms, but lot of them are common. So, you see this one, this one and so gamma exponential and you see this term. So, these three are common. So, you get minus 4 gamma exponential minus gamma r. Now, let us look at uh, r square gamma 3. This is one term. So, this gives you this term. And then here you see gamma square, gamma square, r gamma square, r gamma square, and then r gamma square 1, 2, 3, 2, 5. So, this one, this one, this one, and this one gives you 5, 5 r, r gamma square or gamma square r exponential minus gamma s. And then you can also write this as this 5 I have uh, broken into two different term 1 with 1 gamma square r exponential minus gamma r and another 4 gamma square r exponential minus gamma r. Why I am doing that? Because now I have to replace this exponential term with u r and see how we can do that. So, this is the thing which I have taken from the last slide and now you see you can take gamma square common. If I take gamma square common I will get you see in this two if I take gamma square common you will get r minus r square gamma and exponential minus gamma r. And now in this two you can take 4 common. So, minus 4 if I take then here you see it is 1 this will be 4 gamma ok 4 gamma 1 minus r gamma exponential minus gamma r. And this one is your u and this this one is your u by r and so you have this equation del 2 u by d r square is gamma square u minus 4 gamma into u by r 4 gamma u into u by r and now you can see that this is also a solution. So, d 2 u by d r square is this gamma square u minus 4 gamma u by r and d 2 u by d square d r square is equal to gamma square u minus 2 n gamma u by r. So, what we done is you remember that first solution is basically the solution for the ground state and the second equation second solution this is basically solution for the first excited state which is where n is equal to 2. So, if I take n is equal to 2 this will be equal to 4 and in that case we can have this differential equation and if I compare with the differential equation which I got for L is equal to 0 let us see what we are going to get. We are going to get here you see you make the comparison these are the two equations we are going to make the comparison. So, u by r term this is u by r term is this and u by r term is this. Now, you can see is gamma is equal to this whole thing. So, here gamma is almost similar to gamma obtained in the first case except that there is n here and that n was 1 when we solved when we proposed the first solution for the differential equation. And if I put 
this gamma to calculate E, what I am going to get is a term which is function of n, a term which is function of n. Now, this we have done for L is equal to 0. Now, we will look at what is the solution for n is equal to 2 and L is equal to 1 or maybe just you say solution for L is equal to 1. So, when we put L is equal to 1, this is the differential equation which we are going to get and again we know the solution of this and solution can be given by this function u r is r square gamma exponential minus gamma r. So, u r by r is r gamma exponential minus gamma r, u r by r square is gamma exponential minus gamma r. So, let us see what will the first differential. So, this is r square gamma exponential minus gamma r. If you take differential of u with respect to r, so here r square is constant, what you will get is gamma square exponential minus gamma r and then here what you are going to get is minus 2 gamma r exponential minus gamma r ok and uh, there is one problem this should be minus here and there should be plus here. So, r square gamma square yes so this should be minus this should be plus d to u by dr square will be what? 2 r gamma square exponential minus gamma r. So, first we are doing for r square. So, let us take this. So, 2 r gamma square exponential minus gamma r. Now, we will take r square constant. So, minus r square. Okay. So, minus r square gamma square into minus gamma. So, minus minus plus. So, this will be plus r square gamma 3 exponential minus gamma r. Now, let us do the differential of this. So, first we will do differential with respect to r, then we will get this one and if we do differential of this with respect to exponential gamma r, then we will get minus 2 r gamma square exponential minus gamma r. Now, so this is your whole equation. So, you see this, this is minus 2 r gamma square minus 2 r. So, this is minus 4 r gamma square and this is your r square gamma 3 plus exponential minus gamma r and this is plus 2 gamma exponential minus gamma. So, the same thing I have written because there are two terms here which are same. Now, del 2 u by del r square is equal to this you just simply write down as a so, let us see r square gamma 3 is plus. So, you have to change the sign plus, this will be minus, this will be plus. So, here we are again writing same thing. So, gamma square into only thing what I am trying to write is this is your u. So, and this is your u by r. So, write like this. So, plus this is your minus and this is your plus. Uh, so, delta u by del r square is plus gamma square u minus 4 gamma u by r and plus 2 u by r square. And if you bring that here this side, so you see the and then multiplied by h cross square by 2 mu minus h. So, this is first term, this is plus multiplied by minus if you bring it this side what you will get is h square mu square u and then h cross square by 2 mu 4 gamma u by r minus h cross square by 2 mu 2 u by r square is equal to 0. Let us see the equation uh, sign is ok uh, gamma square u minus so minus is here then this should be plus this should be plus this should be minus so, here this should be minus h cross square by 2 mu. So, here minus minus plus is a minus and this will be plus. So, this is equal to 0. So, let us sign change it. This is minus, this is plus and then you compare with this. If you compare with this, then what you are going to get is 
this is u term then your minus j d square by 4 pi epsilon naught is equal to you see this is minus h cross square by 2 mu 4 gamma and uh, now here you see that h cross square by 2 mu 2 n gamma is equal to minus j d square by 4 pi epsilon naught. So, I, I, I am writing same thing with the minus sign ok this is minus sign this is right. So, this is one equation and this is from this you can get this gamma in terms of and then E is equal to if you remember then E is equal to where is E. So, this is minus E u. So, E will be equal to minus h cross square by 2 mu gamma square and so you will get this equation. What you will notice is the energy in all these three solution does not depend on value of L. It only depends on value of N and this is one of the very important thing about the energy of different electronic levels of hydrogen atom. So, I discussed today how to calculate energy of hydrogen atom or hydrogen like atoms. In the next class, we will discuss if there are more than one electron and how to calculate the energy of different energy levels and then after that we will go to different to look at the atomic spectra of other elements and uh, thank you very much for listening. Thank you.